going on, buddy? You doing all right? How's it going, YouTube? Merry Christmas Eve. Eve, I guess. That's what today is. Anyways, today's video is about cybersecurity, application security, penetration testing. Basically, hacking is today's. Do you have to eat right now? This is what, every time I start filming, she just, she decides that she's going to eat. Okay, I guess she's, I guess she's done. So anyways, today's video is about hacking. I'm not an expert in hacking, so I brought an expert onto the channel. His name is Live Overflow. If you don't know who that is, go check him out. He's almost at like 300,000 subscribers now. He makes videos about CTF write-ups. So he'll try to do a CTF or penetration test, security test on an application, then he'll write up what went wrong, if he figured it out, all the things that he tested, and on and on. This is a full-time job. He's a freelancer, he works in a group of freelancers. Companies are like, hey, can you test this application? And so by all means, he's an expert, he's the professional. We actually did a second video, which I'll post later on, about him showing me an, uh, a huge security error in, in GitLab. And this wasn't patched until like three weeks ago. So you could actually access server files if you injected a Redis command inside of a Git protocol request. To check the files on there, you know, now you have remote code execution. You could also um, do like a, kind of like a backdoor shell now and then, you know, you use a different tool to properly connect to this because this is quite annoying and stuff like this, you know. Now you have arbitrary code execution. And so that was just like mind blowing that this was a real thing from GitLab and it was just fixed three weeks ago. As a developer, I'm familiar with like SQL injection and stuff like that, but it was pretty crazy to think that GitLab, a huge company that many other companies use, has that kind of like security error in their system. But in this video, I'm asking him, how can we get started in this? I get that question all the time in the stream and I'm just not, I'm not equipped to really answer it. So I'm asking him those questions. How do we get started? What are some good websites? What are the types of languages that you need to know to get started in this? Just really concrete resources and you know how he got into this. And uh, he dropped some gems in the video. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And again, go check out his channel and be on the lookout for the second video that I'll post. I hope you guys have a great Merry Christmas Eve Eve and I'll post another tomorrow. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays if this is the last video you watch with me. I hope you're doing all right and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to get involved in hacking and cybersecurity, what is the best way to get started? It's, it's a very broad question. That's a bit of the issue. And so I will resort a little bit to the field I'm in. Um, and I do um, application security and penetration testing. And so in terms of application security and pen testing, it's really just about understanding and uh, knowing how applications, software, how computers work. And in the end, I don't do anything else than a dev developer would do. I read a lot of code. Um, I try to understand how software is built and I try to understand it. And then I try to uh, find flaws in that. So the best thing to start is actually to learn also programming and understand and get an intuition and feeling for how software is built and how software works. That is kind of the first step to just get a general overview of that. What, re what languages do you recommend? Uh, from my professional experience, I can tell you that uh, the most applications that I review are, there's a lot of Python, a lot of uh, Node.js or JavaScript, less and less Ruby, but it still happens, uh, less and less PHP, but it still happens. For myself, I would say Python is the strongest language uh, in terms of using it for myself for scripting and uh, solving certain problems, as well as uh, a lot of applications I audit. I, I read a lot of Python code. So for me, Python is always the go-to language in that, in that case. How did you get involved with this? I started studying computer science uh, or applied computer science, and I was just becoming a developer. And then I discovered uh, something that is very, uh, that is kind of a main thing I do on my channel. I d discovered these capture the flag competitions and catch the flag competitions are uh, security competitions where you have single challenges with vulnerabilities that you need to exploit and and they just hooked me um, and uh, from there on out. So can you give us an example of like just a basic one that you think people that aren't in this industry or that are in could understand? The first thing I found and what hooked me was a CTF competition that was organized by Stripe the payment processor. Um, I probably heard, heard of them or seen them around. Maybe you paid uh, through them or something, Stripe. And they did uh, something called a war game where they give you a login to a server and then you had to uh, exploit a vulnerability and you would uh, 
get access to the next user on that server. And uh, then you had to get got, got access to a new software, exploit that and get access to the next server. And in that case, it was like a very basic buffer overflow vulnerability in a C program that the Stripe people have written. And you had to exploit the buffer overflow. And with that, you got access to the next uh, user privileges and got further. Other typical challenges could be, for example, that uh, a challenge creator creates um, a, a website in Python and intentionally has some kind of, um, I don't know, you, you can upload a picture, for example, and then they move away this image with like a system command. They, they upload the image into a folder and move it away and they screwed something up. And by changing or manipulating the file name, you can now inject additional system commands. So if, if the web application tries to move this file away, uh, in, the file name is malicious and suddenly another command is executed. You would get this website, you would get this upload, and then eventually through testing, you would figure out that you could inject system commands. And then through that, you could then get remote access to the server and uh, you know uh, solve this challenge through that. Almost like so. SQL injection through an image file name. SQL injection is exactly another typical example that could uh, exactly happen. SQL mm -hmm. injection is, of course, you, know, you inject commands that get handed to a database, the, the SQL queries. And in that case, you uh, have an injection into something that gets executed as a system command. From an abstract level, exactly the same thing. Would you ever encounter a lot of these CTFs in the real world? Like, are they representative of real things, or are they just kind of challenges just to test the community, see what they could do? So that is a pretty interesting question, because and I have two opinions about these things. On one hand, they are mostly uh, made up examples people that uh, just think about something quirky and weird and sometimes really esoteric and something that would maybe never happen like that in real life. In the actual industry, you can get quite far by just knowing you know, the typical stuff. But what is way more important to me is that, okay, even though this particular challenge is not realistic, so to say, it's still there. There's still a vulnerability that was intentionally put there and might be esoteric, but it is still there. You know, I, I know that there's a vulnerability and I can't still solve it, that shows me, you know, I don't know everything. In the real world, I can get quite far with just knowing the basics, but once in a while, a developer creates a very weird bug in their system, and then it's like a weird CTF challenge that you have to exploit. People say always, CTF challenges are so esoteric and unrealistic, and I don't like that because that means you are resigning to what is typical, you know, what the majority happens. But if I want to do a good job, I also want to find those weird esoteric stuff. And the real skilled people, you know, they find these weird esoteric. So I have two questions for you. The first one is, is there somewhere where people can get involved with this, at least application security penetration testing? And is there like some very basic example that someone could just jump into and follow and try themselves and be like, oh, this is, because what we're talking about now is kind of like, it's a little bit abstract, right? We're not looking at syntax or code or anything. It's just something that they can follow line by line to see like, oh, this is, and exploit this is how this works so there's a great website called over the wire that i would really recommend and they have a lot of different um, ctf war games kind of challenges and there's one in particular called bandit uh, where you are solving uh, very basic challenges with linux and so at the same time you are learning the basics of how linux works and at the same time you learn a little bit about security and so that is a very awesome entry uh, thing and then from there on you can move on to the more advanced stuff for web security, it's a little bit more a mess. Uh, I'm there's nothing in particular I would like I could really recommend right now. How I learn and how I would recommend is uh, just uh, go on ctftime.org. It's a website where uh, CTF events are uh, scheduled, and you can find the different CTFs. And you just pick one that is coming up, and then you just uh, register an account. You log in. You select a challenge and you try everything and you Google the hell out of it. And then you will fail because everybody will fail. You, you mostly fail anyway with these kind of things. And then after the CTF, you try to find write-ups about the challenge you tried and you uh, look at how other people solved it. And then you analyze that, like, why did you not find that? What did you not know about? Self-reflect, you figure out, you learn through your own failure and then you repeat, you go to the next CTF pick a challenge, you fail, you read the write up, what did you screw up this time? Uh, and that's the kind of the cycle I constantly do. The other thing is obviously I would recommend my channel because the CTF challenges are quite time intensive and require really a lot of 
work. We are talking, you know, a whole weekend. And on my channel, I try to cut down this time. I, I, I need for a challenge 20, 30 hours or so, and then I cut it down to a 10 minute video. And if you just want to get an idea and feeling for how this whole process looks like, um, I have a playlist called uh, CTF video write ups where I basically just do these CTF challenges and I explain my thought process and you know where I got stuck and how I succeeded in the end or whatever. Um, and if you just want to get a, a casual like idea about it, um, I have it about any topic you could imagine. Um, so maybe that's a good way to start. What is the, if you, you don't have to answer, but what is the biggest bounty that you've ever gotten? You know, you are referring to bug bounties uh, where people can report vulnerabilities uh, to platforms like Google or Facebook and you get, um, rewarded based on the severity of these issues. Basically, I just work for a daily rate now and uh, don't get paid for the severity. Um, but it is something I would actually recommend people because similar to CTFs, you can legally try out stuff and you will fail and then you will get published reports and write ups and blog posts from other people. And you can look at, wait, they found something and I didn't. Uh, how did what did they find and how did they find it and that's also very interesting to learn theoretically the bugs i find for my paid work are obviously you know typical bug bounty issues and of course i have found a lot of criticals and remote code executions those are typically the highest paid vulnerabilities uh in my engagements but uh you know never submitted them to a bug bounty what is the worst vulnerability you've ever found the the worst security issues that kind of that kind of can exist are remote code executions where you can ex execute actual code on the server. You can obviously delete the web application or whatever is running on the, on the server. But what makes it really bad is if it was kind of carelessly or it, when it happened without a lot of thought. You know, sometimes they are obscure and weird and then it's fine. But sometimes a developer, for example, it happens in PHP a lot. A developer writes a test script and puts it in the web root and forgets about it. And it was just like a test thing he wrote. And then somebody uh, brute forced uh, PHP script names and stumbled over this test.php script that the developer never yeah, accidentally had pushed to the server or whatever. And that was vulnerable to something. Those are the, the stupid, those are the terrible ones that just where I shake my head that this shouldn't happen. How do you manage that? Do companies come to you? Are you looking for companies? like? You seem pretty pretty set, like pretty knowledgeable. So they're, I imagine they're just lined up. So um, I don't like to work alone, actually. So I work with a team of other freelancers. We have like one person who handles the client relationship stuff, and then he distributes it to us freelancers uh, and assembles a team that matches a certain project. What we do is clients have their software products, their applications, and they come to us and want a code review or uh, a black box test against their application. And then we spend this planned days on it and write a report about what we found and um, you know what kind of issues we found and recommendations how to address and fix them. Very lucky uh, how I got into that because uh, just a guy I knew recommended me uh, to a person just just because I, I never planned to become a freelancer. Uh, I just slipped into that. I, I wouldn't know how to plan it. I wouldn't know how to find clients or how to get started because I just was extremely lucky that somebody just pushed me into that situation. How do they value your work? If, if you pen test a client, like you're just like, oh, I couldn't find anything, but really you could have just been like, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even try really. Yeah, that is kind of trust, you know, uh, that we do a good job. Uh, in the end, you can't prove if there is a vulnerability, right? You, yeah. Or you, you can't prove this, the negative or whatever. And so it's just about reputation. And for example, our company, we have uh, pen test reports public, uh, at least the ones where the client wanted it to be public. Other pen test companies don't want their reports to be public. But in our case, so if, if a potential client goes on our website, they can see uh, the, the, the pen test reports that we have delivered and they can then look through it and can assess, uh, do they know their stuff? What kind of issues do they find? Is this what I want? And then if they, uh, have a project with us and we don't find or they were hoping for the critical issues and we didn't find any critical issues then they hopefully trust us that we did our best all right so final question besides you who are some other good people to follow in this industry when you go on my channel and the fe featured channels i try to uh, have listed there all the other youtubers that i'm aware of that make uh, security content and you can find there everything from regular pen testing to game hacking and 
web security and anything you can imagine. You wonder what kind of platform or where to get the most news and knowledge about what, what's going on with InfoSec. The best platform is Twitter. Like it's the only place where most people are on. Uh, the, the thing is you, you, you know, you get your Twitter account and you start slowly following people that are posting interesting blog posts and, uh, uh, research and stuff like this. And obviously you can start by following me, um, or look through the people I follow. Um, and through over time you get a nice feed with like the real news and people sharing awesome stuff. Mm -hmm.